Hello and welcome to Richmond, Virginia. I just moved here 15 months ago and I'm absolutely obsessed with this city. One of the main reasons I love Richmond is all the fun activities there are to do here. So this week I'm going to take you to five unique things to do in Richmond, Virginia. Make sure to subscribe for more Richmond and Virginia travel tips. All right, let's go. Hello and welcome to our first event. You may have noticed that I am dressed like I'm going to a Great Gatsby picnic and that's because we are going to a Great Gatsby picnic. Or actually, we're, here. we're already here. <laughs> this is the Great Gatsby picnic with Art Deco Society of Virginia. So I'll make sure to leave their information below. They do events all year round. And as you can see, Lucas and I matching in our green themed 1920s. This event is taking place at the Wilton House. And if you've never been here before, this is a 1753 house. It originally was William Randolph III's house on a plantation and it was relocated here in um, the Richmond area. And you can tour it and it's really, an amazing example of Georgian architecture, and I'm obsessed. I've already toured it before. It's very cool on the inside, and actually at this event, they're doing tours as well. So we're probably gonna go in today, and then we can show you what it looks like inside. Behind the Wilton House, they have two Model T cars that we just posed with because vibes. Um, they also have a picture-taking station over there, and I think they're playing croquet down by the river. And there are so many people dressed to, like, past the nines, like, to the 15s. <laughs> they even brought, like, vintage food i'm i'm freaking out i think this is an annual thing so people like must build up their like repertoire of things i don't know but um i'm absolutely obsessed it really does feel like we are living back in like the 1920s we have now made it down to the river area and we're gonna play croquet we saw people playing it looked too fun so now we're gonna do it and the river is literally right behind me i don't know if you can see it and there's a plane above me so if it's a little loud that's why but yeah lauren versus lucas again Let's see who wins, Croquet. For that thing. Okay. It's, it's harder than it's you harder think. It's harder than you think. Okay, here we go. Whoa, Whoa, yours went way further. It went further, but it didn't go in the ring, so. New rules, I've made it up, but we're going to put the balls in the exact same location, and whoever does the best, two out of three, like getting it through the arch, Wins. 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 Takes it all. Okay, so Lucas is up first. Take one. Damn. Oh. Okay, I'm going again. Kay. Another ball. All right. Ooh, missed. Damn. So I guess you're going to do all three. Zero out of three? Yeah. Here we go. Oh. Ooh, that one was really close. I think you'll make this one. You think I'll make this one? Yeah. Or are we going to tie for zero? I think you're going to make it. I win by one. What? Wow. Obsessed. Sorry, I was just reading music. <laughs> so this is actually the area where a photographer is taking photos, but they're only taking it at certain times. So I had Lucas go over there um, just to test it out and he looked great. <laughs> he was reading music. So talented. I learned a lot. I think that there's a pie eating contest like right now. And yeah. then after that, there's a Charleston contest. So I'm going to film that for sure. <laughs> I love that. And I wonder then, if anyone doing the pie is also, also doing the dancing. Charleston. You have to do the Charleston after you eat pie. Oof. It's the only way to do it, I, I think. Like um, and then after that's a house tour. So, so many activities and so much fun. <laughs> They're croquet though. Croquet's hard. Yeah, we're not the most talented. <laughs> that's all right. We looked good doing it because of our outfits. I will also make sure to leave our outfit links in the description below in case you want a Great Gatsby outfit or you're going to a party soon because it was quite the find, I will say. Yeah. Our green matching. Glorious, <laughs> absolutely glorious. <laughs> we have now made it back to our picnic area and I brought my picnic baskets, classic. Comes in handy so much. Like, I remember when I bought it, Lucas was like, that's random. And I was like, I feel like we'll use it a lot. And we've used it even more than I thought. Um, Member Mondays, this, we take it everywhere really. Um, it's handy, it has a little cooler in it, which is cool. And it comes with like plates and, and cups and cutlery and everything. We're gonna eat some burritos because that's <laughs> very, Art Deco, 1920s. Depends on where you're from. I was gonna make sandwiches, but we didn't have any bread. So, you know, it happens. It happens. It's cool. It'll still be good. I'm currently watching the Charleston competition and it is ruthless. They're basically tapping people when they think that they don't belong on there anymore and it's down to three people now. And it's so good. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, special.
original house store starts at 1.30. It was built in the 1750s as a colonial plantation estate, kind of the centerpiece of a 2,500-acre tobacco plantation. Dining room space. Then over here on the private side of the home, we have our bed chamber and our apartment space. Of course, we actually have all of our china and silverware pulled out because day to day, we use this room to talk about inventory that was done by the Randolphs when they were in some financial trouble. But I thought it worked very well for today's tour as we talk about the colonial revival movement. Okay, we just finished on the house tour and it was yeah. so much fun. Oh man. I also remembered another interesting fact about Wilton House I didn't say earlier, which is that in 1775, George Washington stayed here when he heard Patrick Henry's speech, Give Me Liberty, Give Me Death at Historic St. John's. Um, so that's a full circle Richmond moment that you need to come and... Also, this is not the original location of the house. They actually right. moved it. Yes, I said that at the beginning of the vlog, but oh. Lucas forgot. <laughs> He's like, there's too many information. There's too yeah, there's much information to memorize. Um, but it was really cool because she did the tour kind of focusing on the 1920s of this house, which I had never heard yeah. a tour of before because yeah. usually they stick to the colonial time. Oh, my sugar, I'm thrilled with Tipka. Oh, my sugar, I'm thrilled when you fill it up. Tipka, be fills with jelly seed. They're doing the costume contest right now, and I told Lucas we could have totally participated as a couple, but Lucas says he needs to go harder next year. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm perfection. Oh. Woo! They're doing it by <laughs> cheers, which is interesting. Um, the guy with the kilt, though. Yeah. He's gonna get my cheer, that's for sure. Brian from Mechanicsville. Woo! We have made it back home since the event and oh my gosh, it was so much fun. They had so many activities, which I absolutely loved. Plus everybody was so into their they outfits. Were. Okay, I did end up talking to the place that had the video cameras and I was like, hey, look, our cameras are hundred years apart. And he goes, I'm hoping one day, you know, I have a radio, I have a camera, I even have a something else. He's like, maybe it'll be on one device one day. And I was like, okay, he's in character. Yeah, he's in character. <laughs> he's in character. Yeah. I was loving it so much. Um, what the heck? These things that happen in Richmond, they're, they're so Richmond. niche and they're so, I, yeah, I feel like it's very Richmond to have um, Art Deco Society. And honestly, I'm considering joining because they do events year round and they're doing a bicycle ride in November where people are going to dress in vintage like bicycle outfits, I guess, mm -hmm. um, 1920s. Anyway, um, on to the other four amazing events we have. So stay tuned. The unique activities continue. I am headed to go sturgeon watching. Sturgeon is a type of fish that apparently goes from the ocean to the James River to spawn every September. And so we're gonna get in a boat and try to find them. Apparently they like breach out of the water and come back in and it's a spectacle to be seen. Um, I'll definitely leave the information to do this in the description below if you're able to in September. And if not, um, these companies do a lot of different river activities. So it's just a good time. I've got my adventure hat on. This is my outfit. I feel like it's good for sturgeon watching. Never done it before, but I'm excited to see uh, what it means and um, to see some sturgeon. So let's go. My name is Maren Campbell. I'm the Richmond Educator, uh, Richmond Education Manager, excuse me, at the James River Association. And this is Captain Robert Fields. He's our um, one of our master captains um, at JRA, and we primarily work in the education department. Today, um, we're repurposing this floating classroom um, to become a sturgeon watching vessel. They are bottom feeders, and so they sort of um, go along the bottom of the river. They have these like vacuum shaped mouths. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me because we're on the boat, but so far she's told us about what the sturgeon is and it's kind of has like a prehistoric vibe to it um, in that they only saw four of them breaching this morning. So I don't know if I'm, I'm even going to get like a breach on camera. I might just see it visually, but um, it's a nice day to be out on the river either way. Vibes! Hello, I'm back home. Um, I saw two breaches, but I think there were at least six or seven. And the reason why I missed them is because when I was filming, it was hard to see the breaches that were happening beside me when I was looking through my camera. Anyway, but I got to see two in real life and I captured one on camera as you just saw. And then I captured another one on camera 
but like barely. I kind of missed it and like swung my camera over, but um, it happened so fast, it was like hard to see. But if you're not filming it and you're just like experiencing sturgeon watching, it's a lot easier to see them. Everybody else saw a lot of them. So it was really fun. It was such a nice day out on the James River. Um, so just the boat ride in general was really fun. And then the fact that there was like an activity of like sturgeon watching was really cool. So thank you so much James River Association for inviting me out <laughs> to do sturgeon watching. It's something I didn't know like existed in Richmond and it was really cool to do. And I was also able to do an Instagram reel about it. So a bunch of people knew about it and went and, and either went sturgeon watching on this tour or a different one. So that was really cool. But anyways, tomorrow is very exciting because it's my vegan club RVA vegan food tour in the fan. And I'm going to meet up with 15 people who signed up and got tickets for it. And it's just going to be a lot of fun. We are headed to the vegan club event. So I'm doing these once a month or once every other month, vegan food tours where I'm taking a group of people who bought tickets to different restaurants and doing like little samples of all the vegan options at those restaurants. And today is the fan neighborhood and I did Carytown before. And that's why I have this beautiful name tag on um, because I force people to wear name tags <laughs> so that everybody can, you know, it's get to know, yeah, it's helpful, get to know each other. Um, that's gonna be really fun. I just don't know how much of it I'll be able to vlog, probably just snippets, but I wanted to take you along so that I could show you in case you're interested in coming one time then you know what it's like and then I think the next one is in November and I think it's gonna be in the Church Hill neighborhood so that's really gonna be a lot of fun and then every other month I do a free event um, and this October 10th is at bingo beer and it's gonna be really fun oh. they're I'm um, doing like a special vegan menu and there's gonna be like five dollar game cards because they have an arcade oh it's gonna be great anyway better get going so uh, let's go eat let's go eat our first stop was fresca and Addison where we tried the pita vegan chicken salad and hummus Next was the Hawaiian burger, then the pesto pizza, and vegan meat lovers pizza. Then the owner, Simo, came out to chat with us. So far, so good. We just went to the first stop and we're headed to the second. Everyone's having a great time and everyone's just lovely. It's, it's delicious. We're trying not to eat too much, but really, really fun. Next stop was Sticky Rice, where we tried their vegan Szechuan chicken, vegan Zilla roll, and the garden ball. Everything was so delicious. And then we headed off to our next stop. Okay, we just finished that sticky rice and it was absolutely delectable. We're getting fuller though. And the next place is Walmart Taco and we are concerned because apparently there's three tacos that we all have to eat each. Um, that's the food tour. <laughs> that's the food tour life. Exactly. Um, I keep telling people no pressure to finish, but it's too hard not to because you're like, it's food and it's here in front of me and it's delicious. So after one more taco, only one more stop for ice cream though. And I think that no matter how full you are, you can have. So we really only have to last one more restaurant. What do you think? We can do this. <laughs> we can do this. One more taco was next where we had their chips, guac and vegan queso, elote and one vegan al pastor and one vegan birria taco. The food was amazing. Our last stop was Scoop for some vegan ice cream. I got the strawberry rose sorbet. We've just finished eating. We are walking back to the cars. Mm. What a fantastic evening. Every time I do <laughs> these vegan food tours, everybody is so lovely and it's just a good crew and it makes my heart so happy. I love it. Oh, David's out. Okay. David's Bye, out. David. Bye, David. See ya. Bye. Look at the crew. And then there were 12. We're so <laughs> full, but we're so happy. We have now made it to our next event, which is the Belle Isle Moonshine launch of their ginger moonshine. Um, and they do like these different, we've been to the watermelon one and I've also been to another one, a habanero one. And so, Ooh. yeah, it's my third one. I like ginger though, um, it sounds good. I know, that's what I'm thinking. So we're probably gonna grab a bottle, a drink, Actually, I think they're gonna gift me a bottle. I think they said so. Whoa, that's cool. And I think they might have food. I don't know. Come with us. Let's explore. Let's do it. <laughs> they hooked it up. They gave me a ginger ginger. Thank you very much, Belle Isle Moonshine. We will drink it. Or someone will anyways. This is the wellness shot. This is the ginger uh, liqueur. Is it liqueur? Moonshine. Moonshine. What am I talking about? The ginger moonshine with lemon and agave, so. Should I try it? Yeah. That's really good. I love the lemon and the agave and the ginger. <laughs> oh, three. So they did have a pop-up. It was Nam Prick Pow, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, but they do like Thai food fusion, and we got the salad because we went hard this morning for a reel that I had to film, but also I think we might get pizza after this. So we're those people today. <laughs> Lucas just tried the wellness shot. He said the ginger ginger is delicious. It is. Um, typically, all of their moonshines are. So, I mean, at least once I've tried anyway. 
Um, but now we're gonna taste test the salad. We're going in with the salad here. It's like a crunchy peanut ginger <laughs> themed <laughs> salad. And it's so good. You gotta try it, Lucas. Okay. Cause you're like, salad, that's not very exciting. I don't know, I was excited. Actually it is <laughs> exciting. I was actually excited about it. It is delicious. Mmm. Right, the that flavors. Asian. Asian fusion vibe. I know. I was just talking to him about like doing a vegan pop up, and he was like wanting to potentially do one, and I was like, please, because his flavors are so good. Mm. So I'll let you guys know on Instagram for sure if he's doing a pop up ever, because we need it. <laughs> it's on. They have beanbag toss, aka cornhole, at Bell Isle, and so Lucas and I are going to verse each other. And usually, it's quite the uh, competition, I'll say. So you're white bags? Yeah, I guess And I'm so. orange bags. Okay, let's let's film Lucas's first toss. Okay, here we go. Oh. Hey! Wow! You know... Ah, these bean bags are huge! They are. So it's different, so I don't know, you know? Yeah. You're from the Midwest. Though. I should, I don't. Corn is in my blood. <laughs> Hey. One on. Hey. Slippery, huh? Yeah. Hey. How's it going so far? Um, I got one on, but I feel like we're going to take forever if we don't go to 11. <laughs> Lucas wants to go to 11 instead of 21 because he says we're never going to make it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think I figured it out. It's all about the arch. You just gotta get it really high in the air and then it works. It's only one to one though. <laughs> wow, um, we actually warmed up and we did, we did pretty well. We got some in the holes. The last one though, we got all the beanbags on top of it. It <laughs> created like a barrier. Yeah. I said, what is this, a flood wall? <laughs> I loved it. It was fun. It was fun. I think Lucas might have won by a little bit. We forgot to kind of keep track of the score, but yeah. it was a good time at Belle Isle Moonshine and they do have a tasting room. I think you can come here for tastings like throughout the week. I'm gonna have to double check but I'll make sure to put that in the description for the details. But I'm um, trying to ginger ginger if you have it and if you're at a local bar you can always order Moonshine, uh, Belle Isle Moonshine from the bar. They have it everywhere around Richmond. But are you let's ready to go attempt to get some pizza? Let's do it. All right let's go. We have made it to the new Zorch. So Zorch is a pizza place that's in Carytown, and it's more like by the slice in Carytown, but now they have a pizza parlor where they have arcade games, lots more seating. It's more family friendly, I guess, but yeah. they're they're doing mostly full pizzas. So um, we might dedicate ourselves to a full pizza. It might happen. It might happen because they're doing a vegan wings special pizza. <gasps> Sounds and that's like Lucas's good. favorite thing is buffalo chicken. Yeah, so super good. anyway, we're gonna go in and see what's up and I'll I'll show you the new Zorch. That Zorch had a 45 minute wait. So we are going to the other Zorch because I really want to try this pizza special. Um, but the other Zorch probably also has a wait to Friday yeah, but night. You can get it by slice over there, so I'm hoping. We are hoping that maybe we could just get a slice just to try one. the special. Yeah. Yeah, because the other place doesn't have slices, so guys, wish us luck. <laughs> So for anyone who's watching this and thinks it was way too extra for us to go to the other Zorch and then to the, that, this Zorch just for this pizza, take a look at it. And let me tell you about these buffalo chicken pieces smothered in, I don't know if this is ranch, but I think it is. And the slices are huge and it looks delicious. So I think it was worth it. We haven't tried it yet, but visually it looks worth it. But also, yes, we were extra about it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's Zorch we're talking about here. If you've never had Zorch pizza, You've got to go get a slice on Carytown just to taste test it. Um, and then you can commit to a full pizza if you want to go to the pizza parlor in Forest Hill. But first, I think I'm going to get into like really comfortable clothes and then fully enjoy this pizza while watching. What are we going to watch? Only Murders in the Building. Only Murders in the Building. If you have seen that show, let me know. It's on Hulu. Selena Gomez, Martin Short, Steve Martin. Steve Martin. <laughs> Too many Martins in those names. A lot of Martins. <laughs> lot of Martins. Um, it's kind of cheesy, but. It's good watch. And we're gonna watch that while we eat this, so. Taste test very soon. She's back, she's in her PJs, and she's ready to try the, I guess it's called the wing night. Vegan wing night, but it's a buffalo chicken pizza, basically. Um, I don't think I can lift this pizza slice up. <laughs> I'm realizing it's huge. Uh, I might have to do like a fork and knife situation over here. Here's the little piece Lucas just made for me. <laughs> 
Chicken chunks are big. Buffalo flavor is coming through. A little bit of the ranch. Mm. Let's get Lucas's taste test on here. Let's see. He's gonna try to do the whole slice. He's yeah, crazy. Oh my god. Oh. I also think one slice of pizza at Zurich is three slices. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. Huge. Yeah. If you ever see the wing night, get it. Get it. <laughs> get, it. get it. What's your other favorite slice at Zorch? I like the grandma style. Yeah, the grandma style one. It's so good. Yeah. yeah, it's like thicker. It has more sauce. <clears throat> so good. Anyway, so we're, we're going to watch Only Murders. And the next time I see you will be tomorrow for a fun-filled, very unique activity day. Hello and welcome to the VMHC distilled event. We're actually almost there, just walking up right now. And Virginia distilled month is September. And the Virginia Museum of History and Culture puts on this Virginia distilled event where they bring in local makers of spirits yeah. from Virginia to taste test. And you buy, you basically buy your ticket and then you, all your taste tests are free and then you can buy a bottle if you want, that sort of thing. We went to it last year. It was awesome. So we're excited to go to it this year and see if there's any new ones and if we taste anything we like. I don't know if I'm gonna do much tasting because I really don't drink spirits anymore, only champagne and Prosecco pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so it might just be Lucas taste testing tonight. So we'll be able to get his review on I'm some excited. of the I'll stuff. give some reviews. He'll be a review guide today. All right, first up is the cocktail competition. So they have different stands in here with different cocktails and you get a little game chip and you can vote for your favorite one at the end. So this is the first one we got from Sun and Soil. I actually don't know what's in it. I have to check the ingredients. Gin, hibiscus, vermouth, a bunch of things. It sounds earthy. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if that's my vibe. So this is bad apple. It is uh, spiced apple syrup and tobacco bitters and sweet vermouth. This one's pretty good. They actually crank some pepper on top. It's not too sweet. It is a little bit spicy. It's got that apple vibe and I like apples. It's got a lemon too. I like it. Okay, I had to try this one because it sounded like fall in your mouth. Apple and I think it is delicious. So I don't know, I'm a huge fan of this one. This one might get my chip. Okay, this one also sounded good and it has Aperol in it. So we can't be sad about that whiskey. This tastes exactly like a minced pie. So I feel like Lucas is gonna really like it. Ooh, and it came with this. That's part. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this one's my favorite so far. The apple one's also really good though. Time to vote, I got my chip. So we just voted for the cocktails and now is the taste testing of the different distillers, which is outside and they have live jazz playing if you can't hear it, and also food trucks. Also, if it was really loud inside, apologies. If any of the, uh, <laughs> the sound is not very good, there's a lot going on, but I wanted to take you with me to show you what this event is like. So we uh, get glasses with your ticket as well. You get to keep them forever and that's where you do your tastings out of. So we're gonna go find some, I don't know, what do you wanna do first? Ooh, what are the options Ooh, again? Wow, yeah. probably yeah. whiskey, let's which is your favorite, so. Yeah. Let's, let's do it! Some whiskey. Yeah. All right, Virago Spirits does a different liqueur every, as often as they can, and then they sell it and it's gone forever. And their new one is apricot cardamom, or apricot cardamom, however you pronounce it. And it smells so good. It tastes exactly like apricot. It's like you're eating one of those dried fruits in your mouth. <laughs> wow, it's really good. If you haven't been to Virago, they have a tasting room in town and it's so cute. It is a vibe inside. Okay, the Cali hibiscus and orange peel flavored gin. And I got a little bit of uh, soda water on top. So tonic, a little bit of tonic on top. I know, so we'll see how this tastes. <laughs> Ooh, I love this. This is really, really nice. There is peanut butter whiskey here at Blue Sky Distillery located in Smithfield. Smithfield. And so we're gonna try that. Apparently it's supposed to be not too sweet, so we're excited. Wow, that is interesting. The peanut butter comes in at the end. That's really good. I yeah, like that, right. yeah. It's not too sweet. Yeah, it's nice. It's it's like a subtle, so it'd be like the perfect addition to like, I don't know, any cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got sherry cask finished bourbon. It sounds really good. It's one of my cherry, like finished whiskey and bourbon is always my favorite, so let's see. Mm. 
I didn't know I'd get that taste in Virginia, and I really like it. All right, we just made it up to the VIP lounge. We don't know what that means, but um, we'll see. we're going to see. <laughs> Apparently, it came with the ticket. Oh, hello. Coca-Cola. Diet. Oh, hey, there's some seltzers in there. Maybe get that seltzer. Ooh, there's a Waterloo. <gasps> it's a peach one. Ooh. Should we try the peach? Let's do peach. Peach, peach. Beaches, beach. I don't want to go see what that talks about. Let's go do it. There's like a talk going on right downstairs. now about the history of distilling in Virginia downstairs. So we're going to go see what that's about. Go check it out. Yeah, let's check it out. We are leaving the Virginia distilled event and it was so fun. Was I so will fun. say the lecture on the Virginia booze history <laughs> yeah. was so good. That was probably our favorite part, but we love history. We love history. It was so good. And he was really, really good. Um, and he answered all the questions, which is fun. Trying all the different stuff. I actually tried some spirits, guys. I did little sippies and they were really good, actually. Everything was solid. The band was really good. Oh. We got to see some people that we knew. That was fun. Yeah, that was so cool. And yeah, the jazz is always a vibe, especially when it's live. I don't know. It, but you know what to do. Let's be real. Virginia Museum of History and Culture is all the events we've ever been to. Member Mondays. If you've ever seen a vlog of ours, you know um, it's really good. And oh, so uh, it's, it's a good time. They don't. And apparently we invented the mint julep and we invented bourbon and we invented alcohol. That's what we learned at the history thing. I don't yeah. know if that's true, but that's what he said. We believe. So. He knows more than we do. <laughs> Literally. So apparently Virginia was the first one to be like, yay, drinking. Anyway, pretty much. Really good night. Um, really fun. And yeah, now we're gonna go eat some pizza. I think, right? Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Let's have some pizza and some salad and some salad too. All night. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow. <laughs> What an amazing week with so many cool, unique activities. Sturgeon watching, Art Deco, Great Gatsby picnic, Virginia distilled, moonshine, what? It's crazy, it was such a good week. I love Richmond so much, as I always say in these videos. It's just really cool to see all the activities that are happening, all the cool organizations, all the passion that people have here. And if at any point you wanna join any of these events, I'll make sure to leave their Instagrams in the description below. And everybody, in two days time, because today's September 29th, October 1st kicks off Vlogtober, which basically means I'm going to upload a video every day in October, or I'm gonna try every day in October, and I have the most insane calendar of events that I'm going to. So it's gonna be full of fall festivities, um, haunted tours, um, hikes in the mountains, pumpkin patches, apple orchards, all the fall things in Virginia, and tons of stuff here in Richmond. So make sure you subscribe and also hit the bell button next to the subscribe because that will actually send you a notification when I upload so that you can watch all the Vlogtobers when they come out. I feel like that's really important. And I think I'm gonna upload at like 5 p.m. so that every evening you'll have a new video. And if you don't watch it that evening, you can like watch it on the way to work or in the morning the next day. I feel like that'll be helpful. And hopefully you can get a lot of tips for like fall activities so that you can go do them too. Cause ugh, tis the season, tis the best season for all the things. And so I'm excited to take you along with me on all the trips and all the little, I mean, I'm gonna do home vlogs too. I'm gonna do like, shopping to take you with me to like different places. I'm gonna do like coffee shops around town trying all their like fall drinks and it's just gonna be an absolute blast and I can't wait. <laughs> and if you can't wait two days before my first Vlogtober episode, this is my playlist of all my Richmond videos that you can go check out to see what Richmond has to offer. And I also have a playlist of Virginia Travels too on my channel. And thank you so much for watching. I love all of you guys so much. And yeah, I can't wait. I'll see you in two days. Bye.